President, I rise today, and while I'm speaking as if in morning business, it's actually in support of uh, uh, the legislation that the Chairman of the Finance Committee talked about, just taking about it from a slightly different direction. Um, we spent a lot of time talking in this, this body about the, th the ne necessity for us to focus on jobs and how Americans feel about that search for jobs. We read about unemployment numbers at 9.7 percent, and while we, we say with some relief that the numbers didn't pop up during February, those numbers are still way, way too high. I had a personal experience that I wasn't planning on speaking on the floor, but I wanted to share with my colleagues and others in the hall an event that happened, it's actually still happening, uh, about 45 minutes south of uh, this chamber. Um, my office had decided to sponsor a jobs fair where we would bring together more than 30 federal agencies, and we located this jobs fair down 45 minutes, as I mentioned, south of here at the University of Mary Washington at their Stafford campus. Now, for those who don't follow all the ins and outs of Northern Virginia, we are blessed in Northern Virginia, and Virginia overall with actually a rather, rather low unemployment rate. Statewide, our unemployment is about 7 percent, and in Northern Virginia, our, our numbers are even much, much lower than that. As I mentioned, as we put together this jobs fair, not unlike, I'm sure, what the chair has done or other senators have done, uh, we were well represented with over 30 federal agencies from TSA to the Peace Corps to the Fish and Wildlife Service. We put out the word, not knowing exactly what kind of response we'd get. This was my first job fair I had hosted as a U.S. Senator. And at first, we were a little worried. Last week, last Wednesday, we'd only had about 75 RSVPs for this jobs fair on this college campus south of Washington. But by Friday night, we'd had nearly 3,000 folks sign up. By yesterday afternoon, we realized, oh my gosh, our numbers were topping out above 5,000. We were warning people that perhaps all the accommodations we put in place weren't ready to handle this many folks, and we extended the hours of the jobs fair from noon to 12 to, to actually 4 o'clock today. When our staff started showing up this morning at about 6.30 or 7, there were 500 people waiting in their cars, many of them who'd been sleeping there for hours. By 9 o'clock, when the jobs fair was supposed to start, 3,000 people were in line. I showed up there about 9.30, and regrettably, before noon, we had topped out over 5,000, probably closer to 7,000, with folks clogging the roads trying to come to this jobs fair in Stafford County, Virginia. Unfortunately, we had to cut, our, cut it off at that point and put out the word that we would try to uh, have another jobs fair with these federal agencies and some private sector partners within the next few weeks. The response was overwhelming. As I mentioned earlier, I spent about an hour simply going up and down the line of folks who were waiting. Many of these folks were people uh, who had graduate degrees. Almost all of them had college degrees. They looked like any of the kind of workforce we'd see crossing any parts of our nation's capital today. I heard stories after stories of folks who'd never, ever expected to show up at a federal job fair. Folks who'd never, ever expected to see their lives turned topsy-turvy by unemployment. Or by folks who were still unable to change jobs because of their constraints on health care. None of these folks were looking for a handout. They were just looking for that opportunity to talk to the, some of the 35-plus representatives from federal agencies about the possibilities of getting a job. All they wanted to do was try to do a better job for themselves and for their families. So as we returned to the debate on the so-called tax extender bill, and when we work, and I know I have with the presiding officer on efforts to kind of free up credit for small business owners, or when we talk about how we can provide other kind of incentives for the private sector to jumpstart the economy, because well, it was great to provide the possibility of these jobs in the public sector, the vast majority of jobs will and, and should be created in the private sector. As we think about this piece of legislation right now to make sure that our tax code is supportive enough of those private sector efforts, uh, I saw the reason for these efforts this morning in the thousands in one of the most prosperous parts of our whole country here in Northern Virginia. I came back 
more charged up than ever that what we do here is terribly important, that the folks there in that line didn't understand rules about filibusters or holds or all the other procedural back and forth that sometimes seems to dominate the floor here. What they did want us to do was put that aside, put our partisanship aside, and get the job done of trying to create more and more jobs all across this country. It's my hope in the coming weeks when we have this next jobs fair, we'll, I'm sure we'll probably have the same kind of response. I look forward to the day, hopefully in the not too distant future, when we have a jobs fair, uh, not whether it be in Virginia or in Minnesota, that uh, we get a few folks, but that we don't get overwhelmed with the kind of literally unprecedented numbers of the 7,000 folks we say today.